Hi friends, so welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay. Today we are gonna go over my seed haul slash garden plan for the 2023 growing season. I'm really looking forward to this season. Last year was my first year with my garden. Um, we built it and installed it, grew everything for the very first time. So I, I took it really easy with that one. I grew things that I knew how to grow, um, things that I knew would grow easily and well. Um, and it was fun, but I definitely, at, by the end of the season, was just like, oh yeah, we're packing this baby full next year because I had a lot of big gaps and I had a lot of space where I could have planted even more and we are doing it this year. So I'm really excited. Um, it's actually kind of funny because I, my, my mom for Christmas ordered me the um, full seed catalog from Baker Creek and I went through and highlighted everything I, w I wanted and at the end my cart had $145 worth of seeds and that was just from Baker Creek. Um, but then that was in December and then um, for like my New Year's resolution, uh, I talked about it in a video, I decided to put myself on a really strict budget and I want to pay off all my debt this year. And uh, my budget for this month did not allow $145 worth of seeds. In the past, anytime something like this would happen, I would just say, well, I want it and I would put it on my credit card, which is what got me in this problem in the first place. So I said, nope, 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 we're not doing that. You know, if you guys follow Jess from Roots and Refuge, she talks a lot about um, the sacrifices that they had to go through in the past and how she would sit at Barnes and Noble and read the book she couldn't afford to buy and how she dreamt about having the seeds that she has now and, and things like that. And although I'm not, you know, in a terrible situation or anything, I, I think that sticking to my plan and, you know, only buying the seeds that I really need um, is the responsible thing to do. So I, I emptied my cart. She, my mom also gave me a $20 gift card, so I bought $20 worth of seeds from Baker Creek. But before I had made this decision, I had already purchased some things from MI Gardener and from some other stores. So, so we are gonna go through and um, I'm gonna talk to you about my grow schedule. Uh, if you followed me at all last year, you know that I like to schedule when I'm gonna plant everything so that I don't get ahead of myself. One of the big mistakes that um, amateur gardeners make are getting ahead of themselves and getting excited and planting things too early. Uh, starting things too early and that can end up being really bad for your plants. So I have a schedule that I follow. I've already mapped it out. So what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to go through each of the scheduled days that I have for planting things. I'll go through that way and at the end you'll know everything that I'm going to plant. So we're going to start with the category ASAP because these are things that I can go ahead and plant now. Um, I just got back from running a bunch of errands, one of which was to get more seed starting potting soil. So we're going to go ahead and start these things today. So on my ASAP list, I have the Margaret Double Champagne Hollyhock from Baker Creek. I'm really excited um, to give Hollyhock another try this year. Um, the double red rosy, uh, the double carnival rosy red hollyhock was one that I tried to grow last year. This is a packet of seeds from last year, and I started them way too late. Um, I didn't end up getting anything from them, so I'm going to start them a lot sooner this year, aka ASAP. This one was a fun one that I technically didn't have to get, but I, I really, really wanted it. Um, and it's the Tamarillo Dwarf from Baker Creek. I like the idea of this because if you keep it in a pot and bring it indoors over the winter, it actually grows into a small tree. And I think that sounds really fun. So I'm gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and start my celery here pretty soon because um, celery takes a really long time, 110 days to uh, harvest. And uh, it says start seeds indoors 10 weeks before your last frost. I don't think I'm quite 10 weeks out, but I'm going to just go ahead and start it. The next one that I'm going to start are um, subarctic plenty tomatoes. This is an MI gardener seed. The subarctic plenty um, does really well in cooler temps. And I'm actually going to grow these in containers. They're one of the earliest tomatoes to fruit. Um, so I'm thinking if I go ahead and start them really, really soon, I will be able to um, put them outside a little sooner and potentially, you know, be able to harvest from them a little sooner before it starts to get really hot. I might even bring them inside and then put them back out in the fall and see if that's something that I'll be able to pull off. It's just really an experiment, but I'm going to give it a shot. The next day that I'm going to be starting some things is February 11th. And for that, I'm going to start the white currant tomato. 
got this from Baker Creek. I'm getting really um, interested in experimenting with different things, different, I, I was really shopping for flavors. Um, this is a super sweet, creamy white to pale yellow, um, tiny tomato. And this one is a 10 week, start 10 weeks indoors. The next one I'm going to start on February 11th are all of my peppers which include the bullnose pepper from Baker Creek. I grew these last year and I really liked them. I'm gonna start um, a jalapeno pepper seed and I ended up, I got these last year. From am I, okay, I tried to grow banana peppers last year. The seed that I chose from Baker Creek I did not like. So I have three different banana pepper seeds. I have the sweet banana pepper from M.I. Gardener. I have the pepperoncini pepper from M.I. Gardener. And I also have a Burpee Organics Greek pepperoncini pepper. I, we really like banana peppers in this house. And I want to be able to um, pickle them and I want to put them on pizzas. I want to be able to um, stuff them. The kind that I get from the store, which mo most closely resembles these ones, are really big and I can cut out the inside and I stuff them and put cheese on top and they're really, really good. Um, so I'm gonna try again to grow banana peppers and see how it goes. So I'm starting those on February 11th. I have something, a really interesting thing I'm going to attempt with my peppers this year because our springs are so um, chilly usually that it took me a really long time last year to get peppers. So I'm gonna try, I have something I'm gonna try this year, so stay tuned. February 25th, I'm gonna go ahead and start all my onions. I was not very successful with onions last year, but in my defense, I wasn't able to get started when I was supposed to because I was still in the process of acquiring all of my seed starting stuff, all of the garden stuff outside. Um, and so a lot of things didn't get started on time, but I'm better equipped now. So I wanna go ahead and start my onions when I'm supposed to. And I really want onions. I wanna be successful. So I have a lot. From Haas Tools, I have the candy onion. This one I purchased at uh, a cute little natural food stores that we have here locally. This is the New York Early. It's a certified organic yellow onion. And I, I just, I don't know, it caught my eye when I was at the store, that, that was last year. From M.I. Gardener, I have the Walla Walla onion. I'm gonna give that a try. Also from M.I. Gardener, I have the Alyssa Craig onion. We'll give that one a try. And also from M.I. Gardener, we have the Red Weathersfield onion. So I'm trying to really up my productivity of onions because I bought a lot of onions from the um, farmer's market last year and I want to be able to grow my own, right? Isn't that the whole point of what we're doing here? So next up after that, we have March 4th. March 4th is gonna be a really big seed starting day for me. We have a lot that we're going to be starting on that date. So buckle up. We are doing the, this is a new one from Baker Creek, the Apricotta Cosmo. I love Cosmos. Last year I grew these ones, the Candy Floss Red Cosmo, and I loved them. They smelled so good. They were so pretty. It took them until about midsummer to start blooming, but I, that was the very last thing I had in the garden. It was the last thing I took out. They continued to bloom right up until they literally had frost on them. I'll put a picture here of what they look like. I put it on my Instagram. I mean, those suckers held in. So definitely gonna do more Cosmos. Last year I planted the Mother of Pearl Poppy and the Amazing Gray Poppy and everybody loved them. Anyone who came over to see my garden went straight to them and just thought they were so pretty. So I'm gonna do them again. Um, I only had one of these germinate and become successful in the garden last year, but I think it was my fault. The Hens and Chickens Poppy, it was so, so cute. So we're gonna do that one again. A new addition to my poppies is the Lauren's Grape. I thought it was really cute. So we're gonna give that one a shot. I grew these last year and I loved them. So we're gonna do this again. It's a seed dahlia. I'm going to be growing calendula again. I already had this packet and it was awesome. I have two new additions. We're going to be, I would really like to have alyssum in the garden. I hear that they're really, really wonderful for 
pollinators and there's something that grows closer to the ground because I really want to do a better job of filling in my spaces this year. And so being able to fill those empty spots with something um, that is serves as like a ground cover, I thought would be a good way of doing that. So we have the Royal Carpet Alyssum and we have the Carpet of Snow Alyssum. And I'm just going to kind of put those wherever I feel like they need to go. I don't, I don't really have a plan for that. Cut and come again, zinnia. I and I have um, some zinnia seeds from a different packet that I saved seed from last year. So we're just gonna have zinnias everywhere. This is an old, old packet, 2012. Um, this is the Burbina Giant Zinnia mix, and I I actually just found it when we were cleaning the basement. Um, and you know, the only way to know if I'll be able to get anything from them or not is to plant them. So we're gonna. Also from last year, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do these again, but I decided to. The Matsumoto uh, Formula Mix Asters. I'm gonna plant them again because they just did so well. And they were, they did really well in vases and they were very beautiful. Some new additions this year. We have, um, this is from MI Gardener, the Straw Flower. Look at how beautiful, uh, copper red. That's gonna be some uh, really pretty color to have in the garden. I'm adding three carnations. I actually decided to do carnations because of Becky at Acre Homestead. If you watch her videos, she encouraged uh, us to grow carnations. She grew them in her garden last year and she loved having them. And I thought, oh, what a pretty thing because I give bouquets of flowers to people all season and carnations are notoriously known for being in bouquets. So I have, uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce these. This is a white carnation. This is a, a light pink carnation. And this one is um, kind of an orangey red carnation. I think the orangey red ones paired with the copper red straw flower in a bouquet would just be so pretty. So I'm really looking forward to these new flowers that we're doing this year. Um, I'm not going to start all of my herbs from seed this year um, because our farmer's market, there are so many people who do such a good job of growing herbs and selling them. And I like supporting local. So things that are notoriously difficult to start from seed like cilantro, I'm not gonna bother. However, I did see these at MI Gardener and we're going to give them a try. I've got Summer Savory and I've got Russian tarragon, which unfortunately I learned after I had already purchased it that the Russian tarragon can be a little bitter, but I have it, so we're growing it. I also have, uh, this is a new seed. I'm gonna grow some lemon balm. From MI Gardener, we're gonna do St. John's wort, and I'm gonna talk about some of these um, in a moment at the end. Korean hyssop, this is a, bake, a Baker Creek seed. Um, this one, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to plant this one or not. I bought that this this year and I did not do enough research and I may regret it. I have, um, huckleberries. So there, I was really trying to find ways. I wanted to have snacky things in the garden this year because I was finding last year that I would go outside just to be outside as many of us do in the summer when we have gardens. And I wanted to snack, I wanted to snack. And so I did with like tomatoes, um, but I want more to snack on than just tomatoes. So I was trying to find, you know, the different fruits and veggies that we could just walk up to the vine or the plant and just pop in our mouths. So when I saw huckleberries, I thought, oh, perfect. Um, come to find out if you eat the unripe berries, they're straight up poisonous and then this says um, purple berries that are cooked and sweetened. And then in parentheses, it says, do not eat raw. I don't know how I overlooked that. I don't know if it said that in the catalog, the Baker Creek Hole catalog. I can't imagine that I would have purchased something that you can't eat raw. That was the whole point of me purchasing these things. Um, so I don't know how that got past me. I don't want things in the garden that are poisonous. So I think, unfortunately, I may actually end up not planting these. We'll see, I'm gonna keep thinking about it, do a little more research. We're gonna do ground cherries this year. I'm really excited about that. I've never grown those. This is titled Mom's Orange Tomatoes. My mom 
ended up buying, she thought she was buying um, a red paste tomato, and then they ended up being these really odd looking orange tomatoes. And she did use them to make sauce, but they weren't really sauce tomatoes, but they were delicious. They were so sweet and so yummy. And so I was like, well, save some seeds and I'll plant them next year and see. Um, so for the rest of this, these are all tomatoes. I ended up not having any money left in the budget after I decided there was a budget to purchase more tomato seeds because I was so happy with what I had. So this is an old seed packet from 2019. This is the super sauce tomato variety from Burpee. I planted these last year. They grew, they were delicious. Um, the Martino's Roma tomato, really, really good. I made a ton of sauce from those. The black cherry tomato, hands down, the most delicious cherry tomato I've ever had. It was the MVP of the garden last year. Um, and then last year's free seed packet was the Thorn Burns terracotta. It was a super producer, very high yielding. So we're gonna do that again. And I think between all of those, plus the addition of mom's orange tomatoes, I think we're gonna have plenty of tomatoes. I'm also going to do, I wish I had known at the time, I bought these before I had given myself a budget. I bought both the green tomatillo and the orange tomatillo. I don't need both. And if I had known, I would have just picked one, but we have them, so we're gonna grow them. Um, this is a pineapple tomatillo. Um, the fruit is reminiscent of pineapple taste and ripens when yellow. So that's really exciting. And then this is the Grande Rio Verde tomatillo and we're gonna use this to make salsa verde. I made salsa verde last year using my green tomatoes, which is a common hack um, if you don't have tomatillos and I don't like it. I've tried to eat it, I, I, don't, I don't like the taste. So we're gonna try it again with actual tomatillos. And then the same Brussels sprouts that I grew last year, they grew really well, they were delicious, so we're gonna do that again. So all of these were starting on March 4th, and some of these I'm gonna talk to you about a little more in depth after we've gone through all of them. The next big seed starting day is gonna be April 1st. So that's about four weeks before my projected last frost date. My projected last frost date for my area is April 31st. Um, and we, I just always kind of feel it out and look at the 10 day forecast. And if it's been consistently warm and the 10 day forecast is um, still saying it's gonna be warm, then I, I risk it. Um, but we'll see because last year we had um, a really warm spring very early and I don't know if we'll get lucky like that twice. So we'll see, but having April 1st be my last start date, it still gives me enough time either way. So we're gonna go for it. Um, a lot of these are the same as last year. I'll just go through them quick. The Flamingo Celosia, absolutely loved. The Rainbow Celosia did really well, continued to produce beautiful colors in the garden for a long time. We're gonna do the Chocolate Cherry Sunflower, the Evening Sunflower, uh, the Evening Sun Sunflower, the Jerusalem Gold Sunflower. Um, I call these Hannah's Sunflower. It was a gift from my friend Hannah and we're gonna do those again. Those are all my sunflowers. I'm going to plant them much closer together. I had them way spaced out last year and I did not like how it looked. I want sunflowers out the wazoo this year. This is a new one. I'm gonna try and plant these Alaska Mix Nasturtiums. I've heard that nasturtiums are great for pollinators and they're edible, so we're gonna give those a try. Here's another new one. This is the, um, Mexican sour gherkin cucamelon. It looks like a watermelon, tastes like a cucumber with a hint of lemon. I think that those could be really fun to just go outside and pop in your mouth if you want a snack. They're about the size of grapes. Um, they trellis, they, they're vining, they can grow up a trellis. And I have the trellis for the main garden that went largely unused last year. So I'm gonna fill it up this year. I, my plan is to grow roses on the trellis, but that's gonna take years. So in the meantime, I'm gonna fill it up with annuals because there's no harm. Cucamelons are annuals. So if I decide I wanna add more roses next year, I'll be able to do that. This one was a just for fun. I don't know that I would have spent the money on this if I had known about my budget. This is a Kiwano Jelly Melon. However, I learned after getting the seed packet that 
you can only eat the inside. It uh, is a melon in the cucumber family. The thorny skin of this variety is inedible, so the outside is inedible. The inside is green, sweet, jelly-like, and reminiscent of lime jello. Um, and I think these are also vining. Yeah, these are also climbing. And so I thought it would be fun to just have something different. Like, but again, I wanted to be able to pop these in my mouth. And that's a lot of work, having to cut them and then eat the seeds out of them. So I'm still going to grow them, but wasn't quite what I was going for. For lettuces, um, we're going bigger on the lettuce this year because I hardly had any last year. From MI Gardener, we have the Little Gem Butterhead, the Bib Butterhead. This was a free seed packet that I really appreciated this year from Baker Creek, and this was the Merlot lettuce. We have the New Zealand spinach. Whatever variety I grew last year, the leaves were huge, and I don't like that. I like the little spinach leaves that you get in uh, like restaurant salads. I wanted um, I wanted a skinny slicing cucumber because I love to snack on cucumbers. Um, but I like it when you have like the little round slices. And so I ended up picking the China Jade. This one was in the budget. I, I really wanted this one. So I'm excited to give this a try. Stunning jade colored flesh and unmatched sweet flavor. Make this a superb snacking cucumber. So we're gonna give it a try. Um, this is a really old seed packet too, 2014. Um, but it is a pickling cucumber. I didn't like the cucumbers I grew last year at all. They did well, but they were just okay. So I'm gonna play around with different varieties. And I found that seed packet just like that other one when I was cleaning. So I said, well, let's do it, let's give it a try. Um, this is the same zucchini that I grew last year. I liked it a lot and I didn't have it in the budget to get any new seeds, so we're just gonna do the same. From that same friend, she also gave me some cantaloupe seeds. Tom requested two things, cantaloupe and celery. Um, so we're going to plant those for him. So that is the April 1st planting. Those are all of my plants that I'm going to start. These are all of my direct sow. So this is a new one from MI Gardener. I've got the Cyl Cylindra Beet. I liked this one. Everybody was saying this one gave you like really uniform slices and that they liked the flavor. So we're gonna give that one a try. I've got the Black Nebula Carrot. This is new. Um, it had a lot, it's high in anthocyanins, anthocyanins. And I don't exactly know what that is, but I think it's a good thing. And I knew that you got those when you had um, darker colored vegetables. So I'm really excited to try that one. Same from last year, the St. Valerie carrot we're gonna do again. The Kaleidoscope carrot we're gonna do again. Same from last year, I've got the Kentucky Wonder pole bean. It did really, really well. La same from last year, I have the Sugar Snap pea. Did really well, so good. And then another new one from MI Gardener, I have the Spring Blush Pea. Look how cute. That's gonna be so fun to have in the garden. So I'm excited about all of those. All of those are direct sow. And uh, just a quick definition, that means it's not something that you need to start indoors. And it's that can also mean it's not something that you should start indoors. Carrots and beets are root vegetables and they do not like being transplanted. You're much better off starting things like beets and carrots, uh, parsnips, things like that, straight in the ground. Um, and things like sugar snap peas and green beans grow so fast that there's no reason to start them indoors. You're not really saving yourself any time. Um, you can have a, a, a sugar snap pea and a green bean already vining in like a week. It takes no time at all. So I decided to direct sow those. The very last category is the unknown category. <laughs> I purchased this before I knew I had a budget. It's the Crimson Clover. It's, why did I buy this? It's very pretty. Um, and I like things like this in bouquets. That's also why I have the Flamingo Celosia, same reason. Um, it can be feed for wildlife um, and for livestock. So I thought maybe the chickens would like it. It's also a nitrogen fixing 
legume. So I just thought it would be a good thing to have, but the thing that I'm unsure about is that it says mow when flowers appear. So I'm, I'm thinking that they think people are gonna plant these like in a field and once there's flowers, you mow over it, but I am just gonna plant it in my raised garden bed. So should I clip it down when flowers appear? Also, um, so spring in cold winter climates, spring or fall in warmer areas, so in place, barely covering, inoculation is recommended. So this just has a lot going on and I need to take the time to sit down and figure out my game plan for this, but I definitely want to plant it because I think it could be a big benefit to the garden. Um, this is the Blue Queen Butterfly Pea. This says scarify seeds and soak overnight. I think that means you put a little nick in the seed um, and that helps it uh, the water get to it and that helps it like wake up and germinate and it just says so in average garden soil it doesn't give you any kind of idea when like if it, it says frost hardy no so i'm assuming after danger of last frost so i'm just gonna have to pay attention to this one um and figure out what i'm doing with that and then i've just got some i've got basil oregano and chamomile I think I put these in that category because I've already started my basil and, a cam and chamomile. I did that for funsies and they're doing really well. And then my oregano, why do I have these in the unknown? I think I just missed these and didn't feel like going back and figuring out where to put them, but obviously I'm gonna grow oregano. And that actually brings me to the next point that I want to talk about with you guys. And that is I'm adding two new raised garden beds to my garden this year. And I wanted to talk to you briefly about those. I'm adding an herb bed and a tea bed, um, or garden, or whatever word you wanna use up there. Because I'm on such a tight budget, I might not do two this year. I might do one and just have it share, and anything that's perennial, I'll put in pots this year. I haven't quite decided yet. It really depends on what the price of lumber looks like. I was just at Home Depot today, and it wasn't looking good. <laughs> so I might end up just having to do one bed this year. But I definitely want to take a big interest in culinary herbs and herbs that I can use for herbal tea. Last year, I kind of accidentally stumbled into the world of herbal tea, homegrown herbal tea. I grew chamomile and I grew three different kinds of mint and I was drinking a lot of mint chamomile tea. It was absolutely delicious. And since then I have really opened up my repertoire here. I can show you. I've got calendula um, petals here that I put in tea. This is the last little bit of my dehydrated chamomile. I'm almost out. <laughs> last little bit. Oh, I can't wait to get more. I've got red raspberry leaves. I have two different kinds of mint. I know that I have hibiscus blooms up there somewhere. So I have, I've definitely been kind of expanding um, my taste for tea and for what I can put in tea. And so that's why I got a lot of these. Um, and it's not just teas, but I also want to delve into tinctures as well. And I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that because I still have a lot of research to do myself. But that's why I got the St. John's wort. That's why I got the Korean hyssop. Um, and I might be pronouncing that wrong. Don't quote me on that name. Um, that's why I got the savory and the tarragon. I'm also going to do dill and cilantro and thyme. And I want to do way more rosemary this year. I loved having basil and oregano last year. So I just have a lot of different things that I want to have in the garden, but I don't want to sacrifice any of my existing space for that. And those things, um, uh, culinary herbs and herbs for tea, all of that just goes so well together that I thought, let's build. I was gonna do two new beds. I'm thinking I'm just gonna do one and put those things together and I can have kind of my culinary herbal area. So I'm gonna be doing that and I have a bunch of new um, seeds for that. But also when I go to the farmer's market, my local one has a seed starting or like plant start, I guess, sale every year in very early, when do they have it? I think it's like the first 
three Saturdays of April or maybe the last three Saturdays of April, something like that. And you go and it's instead of having like a normal farmer's market with like food and stuff, it's all seeds, uh, plant starts. It's amazing. I love it. Um, and so I'm going to go and see what I can find there. I'm hoping that I'll be able to find some established echinacea because it takes a while to get that established. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to find all the yummy mint. Um, I'd like to find some thyme already started, some dill already started, some cilantro already started. Um, I'm just going to really look around and see what catches my eye. I am really excited to expand my knowledge of herbal teas and I'm excited to cook more with herbs this year. I got my two elderberry bushes that I got from the farmer's market last year. They're still doing great. All the leaves fell off because it's not the season for them, but they're still alive. The little stems are still green. So I'm really excited to have those. And guys, I just think we have so much this year. I'm, I'm abundantly blessed with the seeds that I have to start this year because I want to, I was finding that I would walk outside last year and I was still very grateful for everything I had. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but I just kind of got a little bored. I had tomatoes, I had peppers, I had mint. That was kind of it. I didn't have a whole lot, you know, which is okay. I did that on purpose. I wanted to ease into it. But now that my garden's established and I kind of know what I'm doing, I'm like, give me all the plants. I want to plant everything. I had to really pull it back. <laughs> Remember, my Baker Creek cart had $145 worth of seeds. I think I had like 36 different varieties in my cart or something like that. I just want to plant all the things. It's so much fun. But I digress. This is what we're working with this year. So I just wanted to get on here and let you know kind of what we're doing when we're starting things. Last year, I did a seed starting video for every date that I started things. I don't think I'm going to do that this year, um, but rather I will definitely show you throughout my other videos kind of my seed starting setup and I'll update you and show you how things are doing. I need to purchase one, two, three, four, five, six more grow lights. I have six currently um, and I'm only using half of my seed starting rack. Um, so I need to get more lights because I'm definitely doubling, almost tripling the amount of seeds that I'm starting this year. So I need to get more lights. Thankfully, I think I have the space for it. But guys, I am really excited. I'm so looking forward to 2023's growing season. I am excited to can all of the things. I'm excited to snack on all of the things. I'm excited to just be outside and surrounded with all the beauty and the smells and the flavors and all of the pollinators. I already had a ton of pollinators last year and I'm hoping that they kind of um, remember my yard and my house and come back and bring all of their friends because it's just magical. Having a garden is magical. So I want to throw in a quick health update for you guys. I haven't talked about my health very much lately because honestly, I was doing really well there for a while. I'm on my um, anxiety, my medication for my anxiety and my panic attack disorder, and it's been going really well. I mean, it's the end of January. This time last year, I was not doing too good. And this year, I'm really hanging in there. Obviously, I'm still feeling the the January fatigue and you know, I'm not, I've got a little bit of brain fog and I'm tired and just kind of bleh, but I feel like that's normal. Even the peppiest of person feels a little blue in January. It's a very hard month, especially for us gardeners, but I'm doing pretty well. However, for the past two, almost three weeks, I have been um, dealing with lightheadedness. I've actually passed out twice, one and a half times. One time for sure, a second time that was pretty severe, but I just barely went down. Um, so luckily I'm able to feel it coming on and I get to the ground really fast so that I don't hurt myself. Um, but the lightheadedness is getting to be a real problem for me. Yesterday I actually had to call into work. Um, I couldn't stand up um, without feeling like my vision would get spotty and my legs would get weak. Um, I couldn't turn my head side to side without my vision getting spotty. My face was tingling, my hands were tingling, my legs would feel weak. Um, and it was, it lasted from when I woke up yesterday morning until two o'clock in the afternoon was when it started to finally kind of peter out. Um, and it was very scary. I actually messaged my doctor and she was able to get me in this morning. 
So I went, they did an EKG, that looked normal. She did a whole workup um, for me to get my blood work done. I got a TB test. She said that that's a symptom of TB. I work in the hospital, so I guess there's always the potential, but that would suck. Hopefully, I've not been exposed to TB. So there's just, she doesn't know, she doesn't know. I thought I might be pregnant because my mom, um, pass, she would pass out with all three of us. When she was pregnant with all three of us, lightheadedness and fainting was um, a symptom of pregnancy for her. And so I, and I've known that forever. So I, as soon as I started to feel like kind of lightheaded, I was like, Tom, I'm pregnant. <laughs> but many pregnancy tests later, I am not. So I don't know. Me and my doctor both don't know what in the world is causing this lightheadedness and these fainting spells. Um, and it's been, you know, kind of alarming for me. So I've been dealing with that. Finally, got to go to the doctor for it today. Um, so yeah, there's my update. Everything is doing really great in here in terms of my mood stability and no panic attacks. I'm feeling very balanced and I'm so grateful. Praise you, Jesus, both for your healing hand as well as the creation of anxiety medication. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, just dealing with this new lightheadedness and this fainting, so I'm being very careful. I'm listening to my body. I'm drinking a lot of water. I'm still eating really well. Um, yeah, two other things that I wanted to just kind of throw out there since we haven't talked in a little while. I purchased organic um, feed for my chickies because I've been talking to you guys so much about organics lately, and I've been eating a lot of organic food, but I have to practice what I preach. And if I'm gonna come to you guys and tell you about the importance of organic food, then I need to practice that as well. And I was not feeding my chickens non-GMO organic feed. And so I purchased it, it was very expensive. Um, for a 25 pound bag, it was $27. I was purchasing a 50 pound bag for $19. So, ouch. <laughs> we'll see because again, I'm on a budget. So I might end up buying a bag of the organic and a bag of what they were on before and mixing them. Um, so at least some of it's organic. You, you kind of have to do what you can with what you have. And you know, do I drink grass-fed organic milk? Yes. Do I still go to Taco Bell? Yes. So it's a balance. It's very difficult and very expensive to go wholly organic. Um, and it's just, it's not realistic, but I needed to get more chicken feed. I was there today. I saw the organic and I said, okay, let's go ahead and get a bag. So just mentioning that to you guys, just so you know that when I come to you with this talk of organic living, I am, I'm truly trying to implement it, but it's little little things at a time, baby steps. It's not an overnight overhaul, it's baby steps. So just wanted to mention that. Also, while I was thinking about the chickies today, um, I bought them a big rubber tub, probably, probably this big. I don't know if you can really see that, probably this big. Um, I went to Home Depot and I found all-purpose all purpose construction sand. You don't wanna get play sand because it's really fine and can compact in their crop. Uh, you want the real coarse, grainy, all-purpose construction sand. Um, and I tried to find a bag of just plain dirt, like just soil without anything added into it, and I couldn't find any. So I think I'm actually gonna go outside later and just dig up a couple shovelfuls of just dirt from my yard, and I'm gonna make them a dust bath because when they are free-ranging, they dust bathe in my garden beds <laughs> and have a jolly old time but we've got a bunch of snow on the ground and they've not been able to do that in a long time. And I can tell that they want to because they've been trying to dust bathe in their coop, but there's poop and stuff everywhere. So I don't really want them to do that. So I decided I was gonna give them an area specifically for dust bathing. Um, and you want that to be kind of a mixture of sand and dirt. Again, not play sand. So I'm gonna try and get that together for them today and get that out to them if I have time. Um, and hopefully they'll enjoy that and it'll give them something to do and it'll give them a chance to kind of preen and clean themselves. Always thinking about my girls, right? Especially because we need to treat them like the queens they are since we are not having to buy eggs at the store. At least I'm not and I know many of my other Instagram friends aren't either. Um, so yeah, trying to spoil those little babies. But that's all I have. So guys, I've missed you. I haven't filmed a video in like a week. I was doing really well there for a second but 
health always comes first and I was dealing with that and just generally wasn't feeling very well. So I wanted to finally film this where we went over my seeds and my garden plan for 2023, quick health update and kind of let you know what I've got going on around here and I'll be back with more content. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. I have lots of cooking content, lots of gardening content, lots of chicken content, and you guys, I'm thinking about adding another feathered creature to my little fourth acre homestead this season. I haven't totally decided to do it yet, but I'm doing a ton of research while I'm sitting on the couch trying to not pass out. <laughs> so I'll, I'll update you on that and let you know what's going on with that as I make decisions. So anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Be blessed, my friends. Bye.